did you think your song and dance and your superstition would help you, Eli? I am the third revelation. We're brothers! finished hello everyone to the final episode of let's take five my name is austin luger my name is eric martin yeah. here we are over 150 episodes later we have covered many directors and actors and it's all come down to to this is it 150 episodes i i saw a counter because we had so many bonus. We, had wrap, we have a wrap bonus, up for every five bonus. i'll get the exact number here so it's a lot. It's the it's the let's take five finale. We're not taking any fives. We're just going no. to sit back. We both have a beer, mm-hmm. and we're going to sit back and casually uh, discuss. A hundred and sixty-one episodes. Damn. Uh, according to this, it was over. We should do this math right. A- after this, it'll be like eighty-seven hours of footage. Wow. Could have been trimmed a little bit. Well, <laughs> well, not a footage, of audio. Yeah, of audio, of audio. We didn't film it. But we did. We're not gonna release it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I mean, we were going through. We we're looking at the films just now before we started. I mean, obviously there were. Well, we'll get into some of the, like the people we wish we had covered uh, mm-hmm. later. But I was going through a lot of these, and I there, I remember recording every episode. Yeah. Uh, there's only one film I don't remember anything from, <laughs> and that's Le Cirque. The Red Circle in French, yeah. uh, the Jean Pierre Melville film. Mm-hmm. I don't. I, I remember all those other films on that list uh, pretty vividly. I don't remember anything about that movie. Like I remember there being a hill, and the yeah. main character ran up the hill. Yeah, I think he was the main character. They were in a car. They're in a car. There was, like, there was like, <laughs> a, there was like a like a like a pool house scene that was pretty cool. Don't remember a lot more like. So so the, so I, I so it was like if I were like gonna sit down and like break down these films and rate them, I would almost have to set that film to the side because I don't remember anything <laughs> from it. Like, I'm pretty sure it's worse than Xanadu, but I don't know because I don't yeah. remember. <laughs> we can rank our favorite scenes in Xanadu right now. Well, Xanadu is not, it would not be the the least watchable film on this. Correct. On this. I think we both would watch that right now. Yeah. yeah. It, it says a lot about us. <laughs> yeah, it says a lot about us. But it would be, well, it would be my second, the least favorite. Worst. Yeah, well, you're just slacker. Has to be slacker, right? Yeah, yeah slacker. Yeah. Someone needs to. I could watch slacker tonight. Yeah, well, <laughs> we're not going to. We're definitely not going to do that. Um, but that wouldn't be my least favorite five because I love that five, and that introduced me uh, to uh, the before, before trilogy, really. Yeah. So, yeah, they end up being like I think end up one of my my favorite fives because like one of those directors where I go like I've liked his films over the years, but I haven't like watched a bunch of them in a grouping yet, which is like my favorite kind of these fives where I'm like. Oh yeah, like I, I like Kurosawa. I haven't watched like five in a month. I go like, Kurosawa was incredible. I was like, I, it's just like, I watch five in a month every month with Kurosawa. Yeah, I know. <laughs> um, yeah. So Kurosawa was my favorite director of all time. Mm-hmm. So I, I had to get him in very early. But we were, I, I'm, I've never gone back and listened to those episodes because oh, I usually yeah. do listen to them. And I, I wonder how different they are. What's well, the worst, Mike? It's the worst mic. <laughs> how different they are tonally. Well, at least it wasn't Skype because some of these. It's true. Some Skype. of them were Skype because of just different locations and it's negative five degrees outside. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is Chicago. It gets weird sometimes. But. Yeah. So how many years? Three. Oh, I, I can. Yeah, get I, the, I have, have the have the numbers handy. Let's see here. The first episode came out April twenty fifth, twenty sixteen. Oh my god! So just over three years. Wow! By like a week. Three three yeah. years of this, yeah. And for the first hundred episodes, we were every we were consistent. Yeah, we know? had we had a couple of hiatuses just for personal reasons. Yeah, and uh, but yeah, after that, yeah, Cause, and some of them were two a week because the, the wrap ups would come out the same week as the, the new episode. That's right. So, um, yeah, we started with Robert De Niro. I remember The Godfather Two was the first film we covered. We yeah, that. that that was all great. What what are like. One to start on. <laughs> well, I think that yeah. was why we picked it, right? Yeah. Like it, there was some measure of, uh, like, well, we need some bigger name, mm-hmm. you know, first to sort of dive in with. And then, yeah. oh, wait, we can start with The Godfather 2, <laughs> yeah. you know, um, which is funny because I would have thought we would have ended up covering The Godfather the one? Part yeah. 1. Yeah. Um, but obviously that didn't happen. Immortals did. Immortals did. It's funny whenever the Immortals did a movie we already did on Let's Take Five. 
because I always like would speak the least on those immortal levels. I'm like, or a half hour. Yeah, <laughs> my my thoughts are out there. Like, in fact, um, as of this recording, two immortals ago, we did Stalker. Oh, really? Yeah, I watched. Like, they all hadn't seen it before, so I'd like let them do it. How all. did that pan out on the immortals? They they really liked it. Uh, right, JC so was a little bit hesitant because even though they liked vast majority of it, it was a bit too slow for a first watch. I kept saying like, watch three times now. Every episode, every time it gets way me, better. And me like, too. Flies by, but um, gotta love that movie. Sarah got drawn in like right away with it, and but Pedro and JC want to watch it again. It's Stalker, Stalker is a, actually a good film. I think to start with is to sort of go through some of these. We're not going to go through them all, mm-hmm. but that as far as like talking about a five, I feel like the Tarkovsky five. Mm-hmm. And maybe this is a measure of how brilliant Tarkovsky is because, you know, Bergman, we actually didn't do a Bergman 5. We did a lot yeah. of Bergman movies, but we didn't do a Bergman 5. Well, not a lot. We did two. We did some Bergman movies. We did what? What other one we did? We, we did Seven Seal. Yeah. Is that the only Bergman film we did? Yeah. Wow, that's crazy. So we probably should have done Bergman. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, but like, you know, you had Tar- Tarkovsky. They felt like, to me, that was like the most dense five. Oh, yeah. It, it was like... It was the one I was, like, really nervous about doing. Because I was, like, the worst episode of the show is The Mirror. Because it's our shortest episode where we kind of, like, admit defeat. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we admit defeat on The Mirror. That was the that was the film that conquered us. You know, the thing about that is, I think it's hilarious. I don't know what I saw it in. It was some, some poll that I saw recently. But it had The Mirror listed as, like, the ninth best film of all time. Was and it like, Sight and Sound? Might have been Sight and Sound. Sight and Sound loves, like, the hard Tarkovskis. Well... They're all hard. Yeah, I know. What's, what's the easy Tarkovsky? Ivan's Childhood? Yeah, probably. Yeah. But, you know, Ivan's Childhood wasn't one of my favorite films on Five, but it no. may have my favorite shot of the girl over the ditch and him holding her. Oh, yeah? Like, that that shot has always, like, stuck with me. Mm-hmm. The officer kissing the girl and her feet dangling above the ditch. Yeah. I don't, I don't know why that shot is... Well, probably because it's great. Yeah. Um. But yes, damn, Stalker, I mean, you're talking about Solaris there, you we're debating what it means to love someone. Do you love selfishly? Do you love the memory? Do you love what they look like? Mm-hmm. Um, and if some, if you could replicate that in someone else, would you just say, okay, I'm fine, you're gone? Yeah. You know, like that, these are heavy, heavy, intense topics. And of course, Andre Rublev. Yeah. Holy shit. That was a film that I really got that viewing as my third viewing of it. Because that was also one that we did on Immortals before Let's Take Five. And that was one that kind of beat us a little bit. Um, but this time, I don't think I said it on the podcast at the time, I was so horribly hungover, and I watched that movie in, like, one sitting. Because I just couldn't do really anything but, like, look at the screen. And I was like, I think I get it this time. <laughs> That's funny. I, I couldn't go to sleep one night, and I was like, what film am I going to put on <laughs> that's going to put me to sleep? I put on Kenji Musha. Okay. Kenji Musha is now, like, my third favorite Kurosawa film because, oh, wait, I was drawn in and watched it for three hours mm-hmm. and still didn't – false it was like well i'm gonna put on a foreign films i'm gonna read that's gonna put me to sleep mm-hmm. and in keiji musha is not a film i'm not i cannot possibly finish <laughs> it's gonna be like 4 a.m before and then it's like oh yeah it's 4 a.m and now i've watched keiji musha great yeah um, is that like we've talked about this never like what is like the the regret of a, a pick but like Ron over Keiji Musha was like a mistake for the curse. I, I think so. I mean, I, think I, I was the one who pushed Ron. So, well, I, I don't think you were wrong to push Ron in the sense that I think when you do a Kurosawa five films, I think Ron is expected. I think, I think the first thing people are going to expect is Seven Samurai, and yeah. then they're going to say then Ron. I, I've always thought, and this is coming from a guy who thinks Kurosawa is the greatest director of all time. I've always thought Ron was a little overrated, right? Um, I think Kenji Musha is superior. And I have only watched that once. And but the way you've talked about it, I'm like, I, I need to have insomnia one night and watch it for three hours yeah, until four in the morning. Well, don't you have insomnia every night? I know. But yeah. it's, it's all the way in the other room. It's all the way in the other room. You, gotta <laughs> go gra- to you go own get... the film? Yeah. Oh, God. You have I, I, had, I had the DVD because I <laughs> – my friends were at – it was some, like, DVD shop or, like, some video game shop in the mall. And they wanted to get something. I'm like looking through the used DVDs, and there's a used Criterion of Keiji Musha. I'm like, it's Kurosawa. I haven't seen it before. And I watched it the one time on my laptop on a road trip to Texas. So I'm like, I'm here. Can't do anything else. What a crazy way to watch that film. Yeah. I watched it in two sittings. Um, Well, same sitting. I didn't get out that often. (laughs) But um, yeah. Um, Which film of the 
of all the fives uh-huh. do you think had the biggest cultural impact on you as far as you watching it for the podcast? Like the film that you felt like you had a renaissance with. I got a couple of them. Um, and it's dumb because they're considered to be like the two I'm thinking right now are two of the greatest films ever made. Um, <laughs> the, but the two that like really got me there early on in the podcast, because I remember like another film I saw when I was younger and light, but rewatching Ikaru was like, oh, God, Ikaru. oh my God, what a perfect film. Another Kurosawa film. And, and again, this is, it feels dumb to say aloud. But for a long time, I underrated Schindler's List <laughs> of, like, there are better World War II films. And then watching it this time um, devastated me and, like, really kind of um, changed my mind about Spielberg as a director. Because, again, I've seen all of his films. I like almost all of his films, which is good for a run his big. But Schindler's List to kind of, like, put you with the idea of the five that we saw two beforehand, two of his most populous, most fun films, Jaws and Last Crusade. And then to watch him throw away all of his tricks and make you sympathize with a Nazi for the first hour and go, I don't, I feel gross right now. Yeah. And then put you through the ringer. Um, man, like it, it, that. And that, and Eric, that whole time I've been going, this is one of those movies I've ever made. Watch it. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm not going to rewatch it. <laughs> 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 we can um, do it until the tonight. So those are the first two I have. What about you? Do you have any ones that like. Yeah, yeah, I do. Um, the biggest, the biggest one for me, um, and I'm just, I'm just scanning over right now. So yeah. there's, there's, okay. So I think the biggest for me, as far as like uh, movies that I took away now, and I'm going, these are, these are there. Like these are pantheon for me. Mm-hmm. Like the the films that will always carry on was actually the apartment uh, oh, from so the Billy good. Wilder Wilder Five. And it was funny watching The Apartment because to me, The Apartment is like the first Wes Anderson movie. Okay. <laughs> it really is because it, it combines kind of what if, if people are kind of wondering what I'm talking about. Uh, it combines that, that, that hilarious and heartbreaking aspect from Royal Tenenbaums I talk about. I mean, this is, this is a comedy, right? But it also is revolving around an attempted suicide. And there's something yeah. so – it speaks to a lot of people, you know, being alone – during Christmas, like, and him being drunk at a bar and how sad that situation is. Well, and he, he has no home. He has no home because his, his apartment's home is rented out. Exactly. He's essentially get, homeless. And again, yeah. this was a comedy. So, so the apartment, uh, and then Aguirre, uh, the wrath of God, yeah, which is now one, a top 10 movie for me. Yeah. That was, um, cause you know, I, I, I love Herzog. He's coming to the music box next week. I'm very excited to see him again. Um, again, yeah, cause I've seen him at IU and I, I'm just gonna, <laughs> Um, keep following this guy around. He's my Grateful Dead. Yeah. Um, but yeah, because like it was one of those scenes where like, I think what we've watched like one or two of these in the same room at the same time. Like, yeah, we, usually we almost don't. never do. But so like Aguirre, I know you watched like a day or two before I did. Yeah. He texts me and go like, "It's the best movie ever made." <laughs> and like, and it's not always easy to, to read your hyperbole in a text. Yes. So I'm like, "Oh, good, you like it." You go, "No, no, no." This is the best movie <laughs> yeah. ever made. Yeah, it's it's probably it's probably around like top twenty for me. That's uh, so maybe great. even even further up. Um, yeah, that that movie. I mean, and what's funny is is that Grizzly Man's not far behind. So we were able to get, yeah. for me. I know I that, that's your favorite on there. Uh, yeah, of the is. five. So it was not that far behind for me. Um, and oddly, the one that I was expecting to fall in love the most with in that one was Fitzgeraldo, which yeah. I believe I gave you my copy after I watched it. Yeah, I have a copy now. Yeah, it's uh, fine. Because it's thing of like, because Werner Herzog is coming to Music Box next week, Sarah is going to watch one that she hadn't seen before. And she's seen basically a lot of his like English films, but she hasn't seen Aguirre or Fitzgeraldo. Oh, so my God. I think we're watching Aguirre next week. God, that's such a good movie. So good. Yeah, you know, uh, scanning through it, uh, what is the, um, for you, what, I mean, if you could select the one person we didn't cover, I mean, obviously that got, question's going to come up, so. Yeah, I mean, there's like, it like changes every single time, because like I always had like in my back pocket a couple I wanted to do, like Linklater, Jean-Pierre Melville, Almodovar, like these are all tours I love and never like watched them in a bundle before, and one of these podcasts is an excuse for that, but like. You know, for the Immortals this week, we just watched The Piano. And, like, fuck, Jane Campion would have been an amazing five. Um, I keep – Eddie Murphy kept – it stuck in my head the last few months. Like, Eddie Murphy five because, boy, that guy has had, like, on top, big plummet, and, like, interesting things. Like, Eddie Murphy is really cool. Um, no Coen Brothers. Char- Coen Brothers is – someone 
Charlie Kaufman, I can't think about as someone modern because boy, he has a dense, short but dense career. Um, I always had more. I can't remember anymore right now. Yeah, I, I mean, I would have liked to have done a Sergio Leone five. I sure. think I, uh, I, I would have. Uh, Coen Brothers, obviously. That that's the easy one, though. You know, like yeah. um, which well, is I think was, why it was never done. Yeah, it's like what else is there to say about it? Like yeah. we, we uh, they're they're amazing. I mean. Five would be a fun. Also, by the fun of this, was always like, how do we pick a five? Because isn't their five best films? Their their excellence and yeah. range. And yeah, Cohen's. Is it weird? I'm actually liking them more in their recent films than like their '90s run. Like they're doing some really cool stuff right now. So we didn't, and we never did Hitchcock because never did Hitchcock. I kept stalling. <laughs> yeah, you, we we stalled on Hitchcock, drug our feet on that, and then never uh, got made. And then, uh, I mean, for me, it probably would have been. I, it, it, I mean, it has to be Bergman, like for me. Bergman would have been really good, um, but then picking the five films would have been oh god, it would have been like pulling teeth. It's funny because like we both now own the the insane Criterion Bergman thing, and they I, should have sponsored us. Criterion. They, re- fuck, they really should have. <laughs> but there's still time. <laughs> um, this episode, um, and it's funny because I've now watched uh, three from that what fifty film set, um, one I hadn't seen before. One I revisited, and went, yep, that's way better than I remember it was. Smiles of Summer Night. Which is the, like, that is one of the greatest movie titles of all time. Smiles of Summer Night. I love that title yeah. so much. Oh, my God. It makes me feel, like, giddy. Yeah. Uh, and it's his sex farce. Yeah. And you go, oh, I'm sorry, the guy that made Cry Whispers made a sex <laughs> farce? No, thank you. Um, no, it's super the charming. Si- the guy that made the Silence of God trilogy. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah that sex farce. Yeah. Um, no, it plays like an Oscar Wilde play, and it's as funny as Oscar Wilde play. And it's wild because of that. Well, you know, talking about excellence and range, right? Mm-hmm. Like, I don't, I don't know. It's just funny because that's, that's what the podcast was kind of based around this, this idea of picking someone showing the excellence and range of the person. Mm-hmm. Igmar Bergman has the most extensive range. It's yeah. It's crazy. Cause like much like the Coen brothers, like the Coen brothers began with the movie blood symbol. They get, they go, wow, look at this neo noir thing. Then they made raising Arizona, yeah. which is, a wacky comedy, Goofy comedy where yeah. Nicholas Cage. I like it. Uh, me too. It's really mm-hmm. funny. Um, it's actually the first Coen Brothers film I ever saw. That's one first for you. Yeah, I think mine was Fargo. Can't remember. Now. It would have been Fargo or yeah. or, or Raising Arizona. We did. Um, it, okay, so then the other follow up question was: If I said, okay, you know, you look at the five here, you look at all the films, mm-hmm. all the fives and films we covered, which one of these people? Would you, if I were to say right now, you have to watch that five like in a row, which one oh, would you go back and do? Right like this weekend, you have to watch these five yeah. again? Yeah. Oh, that's a good one. Do you have an answer while I look at these? Yeah. Days? So I, I looked around at it and I, and it's it, it's down to two for me. Okay. Um, Robert Altman, because I feel like those movies are, I think he has like the most watchable, maybe five. See them again. for So, so yeah. So, so MASH, McCabe and Mrs. Miller, Nashville, Shortcuts, and A Prairie Home Companion. Mm-hmm. I wasn't a huge fan of Shortcuts. Mm-hmm. I know that that's a lot of film people's favorite Altman film. Uh, and then there's a lot of films of Altman's we didn't pick that could have been on yeah, here. Yeah. But um, – but those movies are so just so damn watchable. So that's that's what struck me. But another uh, Errol Morris. So oh, that kind of changed Errol my mind. Morris, there. Right? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe Errol Morris. But uh, you know what? I could go for some Gold Rush, City Lights, Modern Times, Great yeah. Dictator, and, yeah. and uh, Monsieur Verdot. However, Monsieur Verdot is unfortunately the final one, and that is significantly worse than the yeah. other four. So Charlie Chaplin may have to take a back seat to Robert Altman. I think. I mean, some of these are so much fun, and like. Yeah, I'm on the opposite of recency bias. I'm like, well, we just did Almodovar. I don't even rewatch Almodovar again. <laughs> yeah. But like, um, the, the Herzog Five of Aguirre, Nosferatu, Fitzgeraldo, Grizzly Man, and Counterspin in the World are just like fun, even when it's like, is life meaningless? It's a fun. Thing. They're they're watch like Jimmy Stewart's Five, uh, Philadelphia Story. It's a Wonderful Life. See, I feel like we failed great... Jimmy Stewart's Five. I feel like that was the five we failed. Like, I do not feel like those five films. I well, retrospectively should have been the five. Well, it's funny because like the one that I would swap out is Harvey. Yeah. Um, but you like Harvey more than I do. I like Harvey more than you do, but I would be fine with swapping it out. I mean, I do you know I, what you would want instead of for Jimmy Stewart? Well, like, I would we... keep Vertigo, even though I don't like Vertigo. Yeah, kind um, of and, and it, we have a huge debate on that in our yeah in the Vertigo five, uh, or in the Jimmy Stewart five. But I think Winchester seventy three, I think, is almost the objectively worst film 
in that. Well, I, I like it more than her. I, you see, like an angry one. Using Liberty Vance in there instead of doing Liberty it Vance later. would have been the right answer. Yeah. I just forgot. I just really forgot how much he is the lead in that movie. That's yeah. why I kind of forgot. Um, <laughs> I mean, we later, end up getting it later in the John <laughs> Ford Five, which is also another great five. You guys have ones that went up for me. Um, it's not Sage that I dislike. Coach. Sage Coach is so good. <laughs> uh, but like one like again, never disliked it, but like went up a full like star rating. I already Clementine. Yeah, you pushed that one. Like we're being okay. Yeah, and, yeah, really good. Uh, I think that I first of all, I like my darling Clementine. Mm-hmm. Obviously, I push my darling Clementine. That may be the most vanilla film we covered. My darling Clementine. Yeah, I mean it's maybe that or the Philadelphia Story. <laughs> <laughs> like it's like it's a very white movie <laughs> it's just like all right well and it's also by vanilla not just white but also like the most accessible <laughs> like what what ice cream are you gonna buy yeah for the entire group of five thousand people vanilla, vanilla. bean <laughs> <laughs> that's what you're gonna buy no syrup um you so i mean maybe well i don't know you, you, so, so okay so what's the hidden gems that we did yeah i'm looking at some of those now um the New World for me went up a lot. Uh, I remember liking that one, but I don't think I'd never seen the full director's cut. I think I saw like a, a shorter cut. Loved that one a lot. Um, we both really like School of Rock. Yeah, we had, we had a good time <laughs> with School of Rock. Yeah, that was for in the sure. Link later five. Um, hidden gems. Some man. hidden gems. What are the other ones for you? So uh, for me, uh, first of all, I, I got caught up because I was thinking about you and I's uh, fight during uh, Ace in the Hole. Uh, but uh, That's, Is that our most divisive? Wait, I don't like Clockwork Orange, but I just didn't like – I, I kind of like you and both. You, but you ended up liking it more than you did. I like the second act more. The I, second I, act's great. I found, I found an act I liked in Clockwork Orange. Yeah, there, there are three. <laughs> uh, unfortunately. He, he, likes, he likes one of the three. Getting better um, all the time. Well, you can't have the second act without the first act. I, I, I know how orders work. <laughs> okay. Um, Ninochka. Like, that's the hidden gem, right? Oh, yeah. That was – and that was us so nervous because it was – because, you know, we take turns picking the That was one the of fives. the ones we watched together. It was one of the only Your ones, right? Yeah. Because uh, I recorded on TCM. You didn't. So you came over and mm-hmm. watched it. And I was so nervous because it was my first pick for a five. And it was like, we're going to do Billy Wilder. I think we got to do this one. You go, I've never heard of that. And go, it's really – it's broader than you typically like. I'm hoping you like it. And I sat next to you. You yeah. liked it the whole time. I fell in love with Greta Garbo. God, she's so good. At yeah, I, I loved Ninochka. That's 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 excellent. Um, another hidden gem, I think, and it probably shouldn't be, um, but the Thin Red Line, Terrence Malick. Because I feel like when people so think Terrence Malick, right? they don't think the Thin Red Line. That was my favorite movie of the five. Yeah. I mean, all of Errol Morris's films are hidden gems. But yeah. Except for maybe Fog of War, people remember because it won the Academy Award, you know, 10 right. years ago. And yet, also hard to find. Because yeah, the one yeah. that's not streaming properly. Yeah. Oh, crazy. Yeah. I've rented that movie three times since we watched it on Amazon Prime. Well, I had the really weird movies that I kind of pushed in, like uh, Maverick and Tabloid. <laughs> and would we call would, would we call Maverick a hidden gem? It's a movie I like that's never been on a film podcast before. <laughs> okay, what's the what's the one film? Okay, yeah. hypothetically, like if this if this podcast had mm-hmm. had a huge following, mm-hmm. and we had a yeah, okay we had, we're pretty good downloads, but, but, actually. But a, but a but a but a humongous following, mm-hmm. and there's like a rap party mm-hmm. here. Okay, what's the <laughs> film playing on the TVs? What's the? That's a good question. Um, you know, I'm throwing these at you. Yeah, you, you didn't did, rehearse you these did not beforehand. Prep this at all? Well, obviously, Eric is thinking of one. Uh, do you, you want to go first? No, no. I'd like you to if you if it's hit you. Well, hit here, you. here here's the thing. I'm gonna give two answers. Okay. Because when these things are at rap parties, you can do two kind of vibes to it. One it is just like art on a wall. You look at it and think it's pretty, and for that you could throw on the Tree of Life. Okay. Every time you look up and go, fuck, well, that's gorgeous. I'm not gonna watch the film, but there's people in all around. Or you can go a film that like everyone's seen, and you can pop over a second and go like, oh yeah, I love that scene. And for that one, I feel like Last Crusade is it would the be best because it's just so, so like Jaws. The best ones you do to like sit and listen to. Uh, yeah, Last Crusade. Jaws is more nuanced. Yeah, yeah. and Last Crusade is just like fun the whole time. My best and great. Yeah, it's got to be Xanadu though, right? Xanadu. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that is that's the end of the party when like everyone's been drinking. Like, what's on TV? Turn it's it up. Turn it up for a second. Turn up and yeah. turn on Xanadu. Did they just pick up cartoons for a second? <laughs> yeah. It is, it's so. Um, yeah, I was, I was thinking about that, um, and, and then there's, I know, moving uh, beyond subjects quickly. One thing I wanted to talk about, because you brought up the clock, a Clockwork Orange, mm-hmm. is that 
Um, you you have thought Stanley Kubrick was overrated. Yeah. And you went out, you came out of mm-hmm. that five liking one more film that he had done. Yeah. Passive Glory. Mm-hmm. A lot. Uh, a lot. And I was watching, uh, I saw a commercial for the Criterion Channel or whatever, mm-hmm. and it was just like the walking through the trench. Mm-hmm. Of that film, and I was like, "That's so awesome that you know they picked that and they and they went that." So with the addition of of Doctor Strange Love, which you love, yep. two thousand one A Space Odyssey, you love oh, The boy. Shining, we actually talked about, and you said got better for you. I am for fun, not for a podcast. Pedro and I are watching all the Stephen King movies. Um, it's already starting to feel like re- regret. I watched Firestarter last night. Ooh, <laughs> um, but yeah, no, The Shining. It took me. What twenty years, and I finally like the shot. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. then he got past the glory. Mm-hmm. And this is a guy that didn't do that many films. Yeah. And you need to see Barry Lyndon again. I need to see Barry Lyndon because again. I, I I think Barry Lyndon yeah. is excellent. And if I had this to do over again, I probably would have, for your sake, knocked off right. Clockwork Orange, maybe threw Barry Lyndon on there. Right. But I, I I'm liking him more. I feel like I I get him more now. It was, after, it was after this five. Watched them all in in the the package it was. Then I read that book about the Maker 2001. I feel like I, I got him more. Um, they at Music Box was doing a, a Kubrick like week. I only had time to see one of the movies, so I just rewatched Eyes Wide Shut. Still didn't like it very much. Yeah. Like I get what he's doing more now. Um, still like not like super excited. Like like if they uncovered a Kubrick film, like they kind of did for Orson Welles. Yeah, I'll see it obviously because it's an unearthed cinema movie. history. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it, it, so it's not one that like. It's just interesting to I, me. I, he, I keep liking him more throughout the, the years. He's a director that you, you think is overrated, yet you do think he may have done the best film of all time in 2001. Yeah. I, it is – I'm no longer going to label him as overrated, just um, not my favorite. Mm. But I, 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 I get his appeal now. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, that's like – none of these fives end with me like disliking someone less. <laughs> you know? Everyone always got better. Yeah, um, that's a good – I'm thinking now. Did I feel that way when I watched it? Because like when we finished like the Spike Lee fight, another one where I'm like, always love his Lee work. Went off a then lot. put that all in a month. I'm like, holy shit! And I since that five, I kept watching more Spike Lee films. Even ones I don't like as much, like Jungle Fever. I'm like, this guy's a vile filmmaker. I'm gonna watch Kate, it. Kate Blanchett did that. I always liked Kate Blanchett, but it was nice to go through hers too, especially like wrapping it up with Carol. Yeah, you know what I mean. She's like, incredible because she's just yeah. such a powerhouse in that in that film. And then Elizabeth is a, doesn't exist without her, you mm-hmm. know, and she's great in that too. So. And it's funny because like, I just, you know, rewatched Thor Ragnarok, which is a delightful goof of a movie, mm-hmm. but it's, I it's my favorite Marvel movie. I rewatched all the Marvel films before Endgame, which was a choice we made and very much regretted. Yeah. Uh, that, that was too many Marvels in too few weeks. But uh, Thor Ragnarok is the best Marvel film to use its entire ensemble the way you want to. Because, like, everyone, like, overloads the cast. Like, oh, Michelle Pfeiffer's in Ant-Man and the Wasp. And she has, like, five lines. Um, Thor Ragnarok hires Kate Blanchett, Jeff Goldblum, Mark Ruffalo, Tessa Thompson, and lets them be peak Kate Blanchett, Jeff Goldblum, Tessa Thompson. They just get to be all the reasons you love them as weird character actors. Um, yeah, Kate Blanchett just whispers all the time that she's the goddess of death. And it's great. <laughs> they love Kate Blanchett. Jeff, Jeff, the Jeff Goldblum five. Oh, my God. Well, I mean, he's in Nashville. He's in Nashville. He's in so many like early movies. I kind of like forget he's in everything. Well, we, you and I, it's weird because well, there is no Jeff Goldblum five. If no. you haven't gone through this already, okay. but it, you know, it, it is. It, it, it's always weird to me when I think of Jeff Goldblum as being a sex symbol. That was him in the eighties, which is insane. Yeah. Um, it's it's so weird because like, obviously I saw him first in Jurassic Park as a mm-hmm. kid and, and adore him in that. But like you rewatch like um, Earth Girls are easy, and like it's him, um, Marlon Wayans and Jim Carrey as the aliens who come down and like flirt with the girls, and they're all like hairy you know weirdos. But they all get shaved, and Jim Carrey, and Marlon Wayans being the doofuses. But he's like the buff guy. Like okay, he's like the sexy one, and he's the two dum dums. But you're all playing aliens. <laughs> Is Marlon Wayans seventy four years old? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> He's looked exactly the same. Like the guy is like his his career has now spanned like four decades. <laughs> well, Samuel Jackson is seventy or seventy one now, and yeah, is he no, really? He, oh, wow. he he turned seventy, I think, last year. I don't know if he's turned seventy one yet. And like I watched Captain Marvel, 
And like, he's not running down a hallway very fast. I'm like, yeah, because he's 70. Don't make him run down hallways in superhero movies anymore. <laughs> That's interesting because yeah. I, di- I didn't I didn't even realize he was that old too. Um, so I wanted to, um, you know, I'm, I'm looking, looking at these films again. Um, when you... When you go back and you think about the episodes that we've had, mm-hmm. um, is there if, like if, if you were to say, you know, what is the Let's Take Five all about? Mm-hmm. Like, what what was that episode? Is there one discussion that you remember having that you thought was, you know, but obviously none of the Gene Kelly fives because Eric, <laughs> you know, I. I lost my mind during the Gene Kelly five. It was, it was, it was a rough five. Like I'm never that guy that says like. Um, fuck the patriarchy, Mm -hmm. you know, but Gene Kelly represented (laughs) that to me in such a egotistical, pretentious way. I, I I hated it. I just wanted it. And I'm never that guy. I know. I know. I'm literally never that guy. The guy was the epitome of whatever that archetype is. Sorry. Well, it was just funny because like, I remember like, because only the fives that I like, I liked young girls of Rockefort. It's true. And I just, uh, on the criterion channel, uh, Agnes Varda, who brilliant filmmaker died recently, was married to uh, Jacques Demy, who made Young Girls of Rochefort. Um, she made this like one hour film called The Young Girls of Rochefort at 25. And it was them, most of the cast and crew, returning to the city of Rochefort 25 years later just to kind of like see the legacy of it. Wow. Super charming one hour thing. You get Catherine Deneu, like, looking at the place, like, I swore this room was bigger. <laughs> like, and it wasn't. The town, you get to all the people who were like extras. Who's still like that's their claim to fame? Like they're builders, but like I was this dancer on this this shot. I mean, I mean, that's movie. You, someone comes up to you and says you want to watch a French musical. Mm-hmm. You're probably gonna say no, and it was my favorite film of the five. So good. I mean, like Jacques Demy would have been a cool. I've only seen like four of his films though, so it's hard for me to like guess a play. Yeah. <laughs> um, but what will be our best discussions? I mean, it's something that like I mean the reason why this podcast um, is so fun is because it's just what we were already doing. Yeah, right. that's true. We our, just put it on yeah. air. Our our friendships have been uh, long ass breakdowns of movies up until dawn, and it's like, oh shit, I have class in the morning. Um, <laughs> true. And yeah, this is just uh, structured and with a microphone. So like, I don't know what what's one of our probably not the Jodie Foster, just no. because I don't know. You I... want you want a whole five or an individual episode? Uh, whichever, whichever you want to do. I think I always I always like the ones that like that you liked more than I did, but I didn't like dislike it and it was like I learned a lot from you. Like like you have such a, a grand affinity for It's a Wonderful Life that like I think it's a masterpiece too, but like you have such like a rich like love for that movie. That I really enjoyed that discussion. That was, that was good. In fact we um, went long. It was one of our longest episodes. Yeah, too. because we it was just like the discussion, you know what I mean? And uh that's a bit of trivia. That's the only film I didn't rewatch before the recording because I ran out of time. But I had seen it a few months prior. So God, it's it's a wonderful life. Yeah. You've probably seen it a hundred thousand times. Yeah, I think I saw it at Music Box like that last Christmas. So I knew it, but it was the one time I didn't rewatch the film. Mine was uh, Inside Out for me. I'd seen it and it was like a mm-hmm. year prior. And yeah. I was like, uh, I got it. I think <laughs> yeah. I got it. Yeah. Uh, but you know, we'll we'll, uh, we'll see. Um. I mean, I'm not going to re-listen to old episodes, but I remember our Raging Bull episode being really good. Kind of a good, like, breakdown of, like, l- learning from each other is like kind of what I like recording them so much. Yeah, especially um, early. Nashville was a, a really good one I liked uh, talking to you about. I really liked that movie. Yeah. Again, I, I my favorite episode are the ones where I, like, I learn from you more. Yeah. Um, I, 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 like I the know ones. what I have to say. It's, 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 it's dumb. So I, I enjoy hearing... Yeah, I mean, I think it was the ones for me where there was a, a strong uh, opinion one mm-hmm. way or another. Um, you know, obviously you liked Ace in the Hole more than I did. Yeah, that threw me off. Like, I really thought you were going to like that Yeah, I, I didn't like the movie. You know, I need to, I, I probably should see it again um, just just for that reason. Um, there was some funny moments with the Norseferatu. Uh, we did the Werner Herzog uh, Norseferatu. Um, we actually did both of them because we did the other Norse for Atu on a bonus horror episode. That, I think we did. Yeah, I I marked down half of the there bonus was two. Yeah, there was two yeah. horror bonus, and I know we did Norse for Atu on on. I didn't have my notes them. for the second one. Yeah, we, we did one. We're also looking at a cheat sheet as you hear the rustling. Yeah, you hear the rustling <laughs> of the paper. But uh, I mean, we we there got to a point in the Norse for Atu where we were like, this is 
kind of silly movie. Yeah. <laughs> like and we, this is this is a goof. Yeah, we kind of have a laugh. It's like this. It's like we both had to acknowledge that, like you know, Dracula's walking around, which is just kind of you know, Dracula himself is kind of a ridiculous concept anyway. And yeah. then Jonathan is just like the dumbest character <laughs> in the history of fiction. Um, yeah, you know, he was going to deliver that deed. Uh, oh, yeah, he's got this. Yeah, it's like, a guy, you know, there's a haunted castle up there you're going to, and the guy drinks blood, and mm-hmm. you shouldn't go there. Ah, but I got work to do. Yeah. And then, you know, so, and then it's like this, like, scene where Nosferatu, the, the vampire, is, like, gleefully running down the street when everybody's dead, and it's just like, <laughs> it's well, almost like wait, no, wait, was slapstick. It, wait, it was, was it Nosferatu? It was his weird little henchman. Like, his, like, oh, was Timothy that Spall, like, weird looking Oh, dude. I thought he was running around, too. Maybe, maybe. Well, that guy was weird. That too, guy was like a, like a rat person. Yeah. Um. You know, I love our Tarkovsky discussions. I really liked. Uh, I remember yeah. Solaris really sticking out for me. Stalker is probably my favorite discussion. With you. Stalker was Stalker was fantastic. <laughs> I was in fucking Nebraska for a work trip on Skype for that one. Well, was that? Yeah. Oh yeah, that's right. We because it was me at a hotel room hoping the Wi Fi was good, and like I like watched Stalker between like my fourteen hour days. Oh God. <laughs> Yeah, no, I remember that. Um, yeah, I, you know, I'm looking through here. Malcolm X went a lot up on a rewatch. Oh, Malcolm X, as far as like watching a movie, yeah. you know, and 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 really appreciating. I don't see that in theaters. Um, you know, actually, as I'm looking through here, I don't know. Honestly, I don't know. I thought I thought I would for some reason going in. I remember the Great Dictator being very good. That was a good discussion. Um, yeah, I remember us and I joined that. It had we had a it both had a lot to say with that. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, there, yeah, I don't know. There's some discussions I don't remember at all. Like I don't remember what either of us thought about tabloid. Oh, I liked it way more than you. <laughs> well, maybe that's yeah. why. Maybe it's just yeah. why I, I just don't I, re- recall. It, it was it was you going. No, I get it. It's fine. I'm like. But she's insane. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, yeah. Well, yeah. that was kind of how uh, Lay Samurai went. Lay Samurai went. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. He's, like, like, well, he's a samurai. He's you're a, like, well, there's a major a... plot hole here. I go, but he's cool. He's got the keys. <laughs> yeah, but he, <laughs> but he's gonna, he's a bad assassin. Yeah, <laughs> but he's an assassin. He's though. the coolest person of all yeah, time. So that, was, that was funny. I, I, I should go back and listen to the Slacker episode because I'm just curious how that. You're so angry. <laughs> that is one of like, but this scene was cool. And you're like. But at what cost? <laughs> yeah. Well, they were all cool scenes. They just didn't yeah. mean anything. No. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's where I came with like the the Linklater equation, which was like he he built himself up. Mm-hmm. He knew what he knew what good dialogue was. He mm-hmm. knew he knew what that he knew he knew basic structure of an individual scene. Yeah. He just didn't have plot and he didn't have the characters. Then when Days of Confused came, he added the characters, but he didn't add the plot. Mm-hmm. And then when Before Sunrise was, he had the characters, he had that dialogue from mm-hmm. the slacker, and he had the he finally had the plot. Yeah. And then he nailed it. Say what um who got you that cool birthday gift? Um Which cool birthday gift? The one about the before trilogy. Who gave did someone give you a screenplay? Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah so um uh, my 32nd birthday was, um, or as we're recording this, this is May 3rd, I think. Um, and my 32nd birthday was March 23rd and, uh, Keith who guessed it on something. He was he? on the Spielberg wrap up. He was on the Spielberg wrap up. He, um, he gave me the screenplay for before sunrise. He found, or before sunset. Yeah. Cause before, actually no, it was before sunrise and before sunset. It existed, I think before midnight came out mm-hmm. he was in like a used bookstore and, the script was literally there. Yeah. It's a good bathroom reader. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. Now you can all picture that. I, so, I sadly uh, can't. <laughs> yeah, not, I know what you look like. <laughs> it's, it's not working out. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, Who is the episodes where I was like so nervous about like, like, like the skin I live in. Um, like, like what I was going to think like, about it. Did I just like subject you to a terrible film you're going to hate? I it's love always, the skin I live in. There's always the ones that like, I, I didn't see coming. Like, uh, like I didn't think you were gonna hate Slacker or Ace in the Hole. Like, those are safe picks. But like, the skin I live in, um, I think we both already knew that we liked School of Rock. But there's like a couple. Well, I didn't like Heat, and we had it well, well, at the beginning. The, the, the beginning, the joke was that every time a guest was coming on for an episode, it was always the one film of the five that I I didn't like. Yeah, and that happened, I think, for like a couple of times in a row. Yeah, I mean, we had. A... I don't think we had a guest on for uh, Kurosawa, but there wouldn't no, have been did. a film. Uh, Pedro did Seven Samurai. Oh yeah, that's right. Pedro did Seven Samurai, so that that didn't count. Yeah, um, 
Yeah. We, but we, for a while, that that's what it was. Yeah. You know, um, and it, that that seemed to seem to happen. A Happened lot. once in a while. Yeah. Well, there was there there was also some times where it's like I don't know what my voice can add to this piece, mm-hmm. like Carol, right? Like what what do I have to say about Carol? Right. Like honestly, and we had a guest on for that episode. <laughs> yeah, and they had the worst connection in the history of our podcast because like they're on their phone on Skype in Boston with like terrible reception. <laughs> the audio is so bad, but like now JC is one of the immortals. We got her a proper mic, so she's <laughs> so she's they're they're good on the the show now. Well, I th- well Bo recorded in a Clockwork Orange with like a PlayStation headset. Yeah, so that that has to be the worst audio. Re- re-listen to Carol. <laughs> really? Oh God, I can't even imagine. Um, wow. I, got, man, I, I look at them and these these thoughts come to my mind as I'm going through. It's like, man, there's a lot of movies on here. I want to watch again. I want to yeah, watch them right. I want to watch them right now. That's the thing, like, like you know, the Immortals. It's it's from a supposedly acclaimed list, but it's very random um, with major ups and downs. These, with you know, a small handful of exceptions, are like 130 of the best films ever made. Yes. Yeah. Which is like cool that like we we rarely hit a dud. If it was, it was me arguing that Maverick is kind of fun. <laughs> or Xanadu. <laughs> Xanadu. Well, the thing is, like, again, we, Xanadu is watchable. Yeah. Xan, Xanadu's problem is that it has the worst main character ever. Yeah, he's terrible. Like, it's a musical. I was always thinking of this, and I, I told... I forgetting he exists in the movie. Yeah, I mean, we have Erin O'Shell on the podcast, mm-hmm. and she, she guessed it on that one. And, you know, she's a musical theater person. That's why she's on, yeah. on the Gene Kelly Five. And so we have her on there, and... I was trying to, I was trying to like tell her, get her, I was like, I got, I got her on this one. I'm like, mm-hmm. what lead in any musical that you know of off the top of your head doesn't sing? <laughs> Name one. And I, she, I think she did. Yeah. And I was like, oh, well. Well, you had a couple like weird acting things in history where it's like they're higher than they were dubbed. Like the lead of West Side Story and... Yeah, the, char- really, the character, the character, still singing. Yeah, <laughs> what a weird ass thing. <laughs> no, it's lead in a musical. He doesn't sing. Yeah. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about the guests here? Yeah, let's, let's, let's wrap up the the whole thing. I'm going to do lots of uh, of thinkings. Um, first of all, we, we you know it was the two of us doing all these episodes, but we were fortunate to kind of have so many incredible guests. In fact, this list is absurd. Um, Special thanks to everyone involved. Nick Rogers, Andrew Rostin, Pedro Aubrey, Sarah Stout, J.C. Pankratz, Keith Lipke, Tim Irwin, Johnny D. Boggs, Lee Montano, Richard Luger, Bo Thompson, James E. Duff, Julia Morrison, Alex Dunning, David Jesse, Danik Cameron, Nick Song, Ed Lear, Aaron O'Shell, Tara Olivero, Josh Larson, Zach Bundy, David Guyton, Ray Martindale, Ray Martindale, and Adam Lord. Those are Ray Martindales, one's a senior and a junior. I thought like I can't remember like where they are because is your brother a third? My brother's actually the fourth. The fourth. Yeah. My okay. Dad, my dad's the the third. So I got Ray three and Ray four. Ray three and Ray four. Um, truly overwhelmed by, um, friends, colleagues, sometimes people I, I hadn't even met before until they did the podcast and they were outstanding each and every one of them. And as we're in this section, I can't go without saying, um. What it what an honor it was to have my uncle Richard Luger be on the podcast. He did a special episode covering Doctor Strange Love, which was a interview that was a lot about his career and talking about his legacy with um, Russian denuclearization. the The fact that he would call in to this silly show um, as a s- s- former senator, yeah, the, as a former senator, the, the man's very busy. Um, former mayor of Indianapolis, Indianapolis six term Senator, um, medal of freedom recipient. The, it, it says so much about his character and also, um, how much he meant to me. He passed last week. Um, truly incredible man and will always be remembered. And, um, yeah, we'd be so, remiss without yes. uh, mentioning that. So truly an uh, incredible, incredible person. Um, and then uh, more thank yous have to kind of continue by by thanking you, Eric. Um, this Me. show, yeah, you Me. boy, you boy. Um, <laughs> th- this show is 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 what we kind of love to do. I mean, other people kind of like 
shoot hoops or, or, or play Halo. We talk movies. <laughs> um, and this whole thing was just an excuse to do it more often, essentially. And um, you always give me more insights and um, observations and enthusiasm towards cinema. And it has been a complete joy to do this yeah. with you. Well, uh, yeah, thank you too, Austin. I, you know, it's, 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 it's always fun because, you know, when Austin and I first started hanging out, first of all, we met on a film set. We did. Um, and then I tried to have him fired. He did. <laughs> <laughs> but that's, that's for another day. Uh, you know, it, 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 we, we, we've always discussed art and film in particular. We wrote a play together mm-hmm. that was performed in Chicago. You know, we've gone, we, so this isn't really the first project we've mm-hmm. worked on, uh, together but it has certainly been the most enduring Mm -hmm. and it's the one that's going to last the longest because it's always going to be out there for for people to look at it Mm -hmm. but um yeah i mean i i enjoy i enjoy the debate with you um Mm -hmm. you know i i enjoy the agreement with you enjoy talking about the the things that that we love and yeah it was a real pleasure thank you for the idea yeah. And, and inviting me to be a part of it because there are other people you talk films with too. You could, you could have invited to, mm-hmm. to, to be on the show. So, um, but, uh, onwards and upwards. I, yeah. I like where I like, I like where it, it, it ended. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing what, uh, what other things come down the pipe yeah. for you. So, Indeed. so, and I guess the only person left to thank is is all of you for for listening to this insanity. Um, this has been a true joy, and the fact that the all of you have downloaded this um, really kind of warms our heart. Yeah. We we could have done this without the mics on, and sometimes it sounds like we did. Um, <laughs> still uploaded it. Um, truly, yeah. Uh, thank you to everyone. Really, this has been a a, a wonderful experience. Oh, special also special thanks again to Adam Lord. For all the amazing music he did throughout the whole show, um, his his opening music um, have just been amazing. Yeah, and it's my favorite one. With is the, the last one he has here. So, so we'll we'll, we'll listen into it for that. I also like this is so it came out of my mouth as well. Mm-hmm. Thanks to to everyone who listened to us and uh, stuck around through mm-hmm. the ever growing. There's no end, you know, the ever growing yeah. voyage that that is of of cinema. Yes. So thanks to everyone. All right, so for the last time, my name is Austin Luger. My name was and is still Eric Martindale. (laughs) Bye, everyone. Bye-bye!